You are now listening to a member of the Disney Podcast family. Head over to Disney Podcast Family on Instagram to see all the latest posts for this show and links to other great Disney podcasts. There was an idea. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people. See if they could become something more. I have an army. We have a Hulk. This is the Marvel Tribe, brought to you by Walt's Apartment Podcast and the Diz Insider. Avengers! Assemble. Welcome back the day after Christmas, Marvel Tribe. We are joining you for another special series of Follow the What If Season 2 Advent Calendar Breakdown that Marvel and Disney Plus has released. I am your host, Blurred Hope. Join with me. I have my two co-host compadres. I'll go reverse this time. We have Skip. To my Lou, Mr. Lou Knight, Big Lou, Luniversal fanboy, like Lou. How are you doing on this day after Christmas? I'm um, doing pretty good. I feel like uh, What If kind of brought me back into the game with this episode, but I am doing really good. Back to work today, so uh, I'm glad to be here. I mean, I'm a little late to the show, but I'm I'm ready. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. And then we also have our, our extraordinary podcast princess, the one that only Sam, who's also joined with her little purple dinosaur figment stuff <laughs> in the corner there. Always. How are you, Sam? I'm good. I'm actually super excited to record this episode with you guys because we all have very differing opinions and we all mm-hmm. have uh, very... We This was not received well by all of us. And uh, some of us are very pleased with this episode so and if you know anything about lewis he hates everything so <laughs> it's going to be a switch up tonight and he likes to argue too have you seen undisputed so we may have a blurred hulk l money lou knight face off tonight and i will sit here and moderate because dang there's some good things to discuss uh so this was episode five for us of uh, what if season two and it was what if peggy carter you know as our as our captain carter goes up against the hydra stomper lou how did you rate this episode so for me this is an eight i would have it at an eight because i've been i've been preaching it all all this whole season do i ask myself what if like do i need this And at first, the first of the episode, I was like, "Mm, here we go, Captain Carter, Black Widow, we're in New York. Like, And even down to the stunts they were doing, I was like, so they pulled Captain America out and they gave us his story. Then it got a lot better. The the one-liners from like RoboCop and all that, it hit for me. I was like, all right. Then we almost had the 12-year-old moment. I was like, dude, Steve Rogers kill Bucky Barth. Like, let that happen. And he didn't do it, but he was coming back to do it. He was distracted. I was like, let's go. And for me, this episode was really entertaining. But but I'm not going to go too far in order to break it down. But for me, it's at an 8. It could probably slip to a 7.5 if I watch it again. But I just watched it a few hours ago, so it's real fresh in my mind. So I'm going to 8. All right, I'll go with my rating next. So right. I, I'm i at an eight as well. Um, I'm at an eight. And I, I really did agree with Lewis when it's like, I would have wanted to see this. I would have wanted to see Captain Carter go up against um, Hydra Stomper. I loved the martial arts that she was displaying. She, uh, Natasha Romanoff and Peggy Carter were two badasses when their fight scenes came up in this episode i absolutely love that about them and i love the fact that peggy carter just was like 
the scenes that we did see her taking control, she took control and people listened to her. She was commanding respect. And David and I talked talked a little bit before um, we went live. And so now my opinion is a little bit different. Um, but Dave, David's opinion definitely uh, changed changed my opinion to the way that they approach this. So David, Lou is literally bursting. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Lou is literally bursting at the seams to hear your rating and your opinion. And I know our fans are at this point after we're talking it up. So yeah. go ahead, Blurred Hulk. Tell us what you ranked this episode of What If. All right. So I, I, I am, you know, I'm, I've always been accused here and there of being a Marvel fanboy, and, and I am. I am. I, 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 I love it. I get, you know, like, give me all the content I can consume. Um, with that said, my rating for this episode is probably is the worst of the entire uh, both seasons of series. Uh, this is a four. Um, the reason why this is a four um so I this is a sequel, a continuation of the original Captain Carter. Uh, you know what? What if she became a Captain America? Uh, we saw that on season one, where you know, uh, you know, there's the the plot for you know the to blow up the experiment, and you know uh, she was able to get in the way, and she ended up getting dosed and all that stuff. It was terrific. In fact, the only reason why. Steve Rogers uh, became Captain America is because of sexism. I mean, the truth be told, Peggy Carter is a lot more smarter. She's a better fighter. She's well-rounded, uh, better strategist than any of the guys in the military. I mean, they were looking for the perfect specimen outside of a woman back in that day. She would have been it. That was that was the case. But it was just sheer luck that it just she got hit with the she got hit at the right time and accidents made her to be the new Captain America. Captain and for Carter. anybody that wants to disagree that Peggy Carter wouldn't have been a better candidate or just as damn good of a oh candidate God. as Steve Rogers, go back and watch Captain America and watch who was diving for that live grenade. I would yeah, I would have that yeah. debate easily all day long with anybody uh steve rogers is just steve rogers on steroids captain peggy was the perfect weapon and is the perfect weapon uh she we got do to see her as she, to sacrifice for the mission 100 percent. she and she faces down her fear she goes in cuts up the hydra octopus monster thing she got transported to the future the watch she was made to the guardians of the um of the multiverse uh, by the watcher himself, not by accident and stuff because of who she is. She's incredibly highly intelligent, master strategist, master technician, master fighter. It opened up the scene with her showing, displaying her feats and stuff with, with black widow, which was amazing. I did love that part, but here's, here's where it lost me and it stayed losing me. They decided to let's just change who Peggy Carter is and just have her kind of uh, have her emotions rule over her then her logic and intelligence and stuff and have her do the stupidest stuff and make the stupidest mistakes because she's in love with Steve Rogers and stuff. And when I mean stupid, so we'll get into, into the stupid points and stuff like the, the, Oh, let's turn them off and turn them back on again. Let's not bring Tony Starks and Bruce Banners to help us with this piece. Let's talk to them and tell them how much we love them and how, you know, uh, Mr. Hydra Stomper, Steve Rogers, uh, you know, the, his love was so pure, he would like snap out of this Hydra, whatever trance that he's in and stuff. Um, yeah, let's walk into a trap and not realize it's a trap where we're in nuke town where all these uh robotic people and stuff that are attacking me, and then I still believe you that you didn't betray me up until the point that uh the the red room the leader of the red room had to actually tell you that um you know you betrayed me and i said mission accomplished and then i pointed the guns at you and i was surprised because i'm an idiot who's in love and i still love you at the end even when you decided to point the gun i mean it literally was driving me freaking insane they're like Let's make her a schoolgirl in love with the crush versus the logical, uh, badass female uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes martial arts uh, warrior that we have got to know. So, See, Lou overlooked that because it was about love. 
I don't. Yeah, I I did it, and <laughs> it it with. was all throughout. I couldn't shake that throughout the entire uh, half hour and stuff, and it just ruined it worse and worse and worse. I mean, it went down from an eight to a seven to a six. It if it would have continued, if this was an hour long, I would it would have eventually got rated a one by me. It just they just couldn't undo it i was and i told sam like there could have been a redeeming piece where she was just playing uh coy and like yeah no it was a mission accomplished for you mission accomplished me we wanted to track down the red room i needed to find out who's the who's leading this i sorry steve i had to use what i had which was you know that i was this damn someone distressed love you know goggle person and stuff to get you where i'm where i needed to be and now i'm going to you know engineer something to destroy the red room to complete my mission we didn't get that we didn't get this sherlock home i'm playing chess while you're playing checkers and stuff we got this like i'm ready to die at the end because i love you shoot me in the face like go ahead that's what we got so yeah we got that's a four i'm giving it a three now it, it's a three episode so there's my ranking we can start the breakdown well i want to hear lou respond to that first so, <laughs> oh damn! Um, so you mean you mean they did exactly what I've been complaining about the last episodes that you guys gave high r- grades for? They did exactly what? Oh, they they didn't stick to the storyline. They changed it completely. Oh, Mm-mm. well, the what if? You mean they actually played? This is probably the best episode they played to the what if factor of the entire season. Like but they lessened her integrity as wrong, a character. Wrong. They can Let's, change the outcome. Hold on, I, hold, I, on, hold, on hold on, hold on. I'm talking chance. about personality. They didn't make like uh, like a, Iron a person- Man into frat boy Thor. They didn't do that. Okay? They changed her integrity as a character. Completely what? changed I mean, the character. They changed. It's it's a what if, and then we just shared this yesterday where we're like, it's not it's all parallel sequel. to the same. It's a sequel to the original What If. They did say it was a sequel. So this was a continuation of who she was introduced as a character to us last season. Exactly. And so she did it. And so even more so, she did the same thing that Steve Rogers did the whole MCU. Whenever Bucky came in the picture, he's like, I forget who I am. It's Bucky. But that's what we're saying is that she's better than Steve Rogers. And and, and I'm going to throw that topic out, the whole sexist thing. These characters Mm -hmm. are fictional. If anyone wants to play the sexist card on that, that is completely outrageous. If like it's a fictional character, I mean, let's hold it back. I'm it's saying actually that's a part that. of the reason why the uh, Captain America uh, thing was in place. They didn't have women in the in. I mean, we, we're talking about uh, in general, not, like it's not a big speculation as to why there was no women candidates for the super soldier. Like program. in the actual, yeah, there in was the no actual MCU in the war and stuff. It, it's not a big far fetched. Like, oh, you want to play a sexism card? It was a part of the. It was I mean, even a part of the and, movie. And we can't not. say that she's not better. I mean, and we have full proof that she's not that he is better because the fact that he was able to lift. Uh, I can never pronounce Thor's hammer, but Thor's hammer, showing that okay. he is worthy. So it's not that he's just Steve Rogers. I'm not saying he's not worthy. But not I mean, saying he's not worthy. I mean, have Don't we seen Captain me. Carter pick up Thor's hammer yet? Have we? She's not had the opportunity yeah. to. Yeah, she she absolutely can. I mean, have we seen it? No, we haven't seen it. We're, ah, we're, there's yeah. no how do we, how do we know? How do we know? Comics. That's how we know. So I know. But, but if we have not seen it. Questions. I mean, if we have not seen it, then we have we don't know. Not only okay. that, I mean, right. she she did the same thing that Steve Rogers did. Steve Rogers abandoned missions to prove that Bucky Barnes was right. Every time, oh no, it's Bucky. I gotta do it for Bucky. So we can and if she is the alternate universe of Captain America, she did the same thing for Cap. Oh, that's Cap. I have to divert what I'm doing because that's Cap. That's Steve Rogers. She did the same thing. Not only that, mm-hmm. Marvel played the best what if card on this by switching it. She's doing what Cap would do for Bucky Barnes. Bucky Barnes is the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, they literally teacup the shit out of this episode and said, let's play a real game of what if. What, what's blowing my mind is we are mm-hmm. giving this a four for uh, Captain Carter being in love. Three. Three. Uh, uh, three. But we're not giving, you know, Happy Hogan turning into a cheesy parody Hulk a less number. Are we kidding us ourselves here? Uh, that is yeah, ridiculous. Absolutely. This was the best what if episode besides the second one because it played to the what if. It didn't give us the same sad violin story of, oh, yep. I mean, a, a hero failed. 
Oh my gosh, have I not been asking for that this entire season? And she failed. Right. She dropped the ball. Not all heroes win. I mean, then it's then you're Superman. If you have no faults, you're Superman. And Superman's a big ass P with the W WSs. I mean, come on now. Like oh, all right. oh, okay. Are you, so, you done? Look, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, it was yours. Let's this off. Because here, right. here's 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 what Zalu is saying. If this was a fresh what if. We don't have any background history on, on, on Captain Carter. We don't know an established character base for her and stuff. Or the only establishment we got was a, a five-second cl clip of her being cut down by a Scarlet Witch in, uh, in Doctor Strange and stuff. That was our under introduction. I would have rated this higher. But that's not what we got. We got a full-ass episode of... Peggy, Captain Carter, and stuff. We got a full episode demonstrating her intelligence, her war strategy, her fighting skills, every single piece. Then we got a sequel as according to this. Same timeline, same human being. Not a different yeah, timeline. The Watcher said version. this is a sequel. This was this a continuation is, yeah. of the exact same not, character from season exactly. one. Did, did she see yeah. Steve in that first episode? What? Did she see yeah. Steve Rogers in that first episode? Yeah, she saw Steve Rogers in that first episode. In the Stomper? What are we talking? Yeah. He no, was he, didn't, the, he, was he, he didn't see him. She didn't see him in the Hydra Stomper the first episode, but she That's saw the entire him. change in the story was she now she knows Steve's in there. Okay. So here's here's the thing. You're you're equating that Steve Rogers and, and Peggy Carter are of, of the same uh, mind. So what he does is completely should be uh, okay for what she does. Okay. I'm saying, no, that's not the case. It's they're com two completely different people. She, he does this because he has a bromance with Bucky and everything else. And, and that's fine because that's who he is. I'm arguing the fact that she is a lot more of a logical tactician than he is. And that's been proving in the previous in the previous of the same what if category, the same character and stuff. I'm saying they changed her character from what was on the first season of her character, period. They made her from that into this, this very kind of, uh, I'm just going to fall for anything kind of, kind of uh, game, even logic, logic went out the window and stuff. There was even, there was still somewhat a semblance of logic when it came to the relationship between Bucky and Captain America, he he still fought Bucky and still everything else. But the thing is, it was completely different. They're not the exact same beings and stuff. So it's not it's not a fair argument to say, well, he did this because he he did the same thing with Bucky and stuff and and did sacrifice. Yeah, he was supposed to. That's that's how that was. She's not. That's not how who she is as a character and stuff. That she's was had, never how she was when she was built in the first season for this character, or even how she is. In any comic book and stuff, they but in, in the entire MCU, she's had a soft spot for Steve. That's how Steve got to be the super soldier in the first place. She's a soft spot for him. That okay, is that is, her, that is her kryptonite is Steve Rogers. The, okay. Not to make another Superman reference, but that's her kryptonite. That's what brings her yeah. down. I mean, so guess what? They played on that. I mean, listen, look, I mean, they made Star Wars references in this episode, so you're welcome to make Superman references. I mean, I'm just saying, like. I mean, if, if 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 that is a three for you, then I mean, Ooh. let's let's come on now. Then the rest of the season needs to be reevaluated, huh? Come Again, okay. I mean, it's all subjective, and it's all object. It's all objective to each of our own opinions. So technically, I, I no, that, we're all good. I mean, but the, but at the same time, the last four episodes, I or two episodes, I should say. I have shared because you didn't like Happy Hogan as 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 a Hulk version and stuff. Because what? Is that I I don't I don't get I don't get the the, the inferences and stuff between the comparisons. Well, the, stuff. just the because last I rated that as actually a really good episode and stuff. All of a sudden, I can't rate this as low for no, the I'm reasons I'm rating. Well, this, I can't say you That's can't exactly rate that. what you're saying though. So no, what I'm saying is, I mean, they literally did everything. Yours, what you're saying about this episode is exactly what I said about the last two episodes, but those mm -hmm. were home runs apparently. But they the inconsistency of changing characters of that's not who they are. And now it's okay because it's a rate lower because that's not who Captain Carter is. I mean, we just name, name another one. character they changed that they already no. Wrote so Lou, here's the, here's the, the, the difference, series. Lou. Here's the difference. We're not comparing the MCU character 
to the what if characters. We're not talking about what happened in the actual timeline that we are used to. We're talking about a character that has only been introduced to us in what if. They created her persona in what if, and we are not getting a different timeline version of her. We are getting Mm -hmm. the same character who they have now removed the integrity of that character by making her a sappy, lovesick puppy. But you also didn't get Steve Rogers in that episode, so we don't know that. We don't know that she. This wasn't a weak spot for her. Well, they just okay. They well, here's the thing: making her a love. Stuff. Okay, well, here's the, making her a lovesick puppy, because even in the MCU, she's not really the lovesick puppy. Hmm. No, she's not. But she has a soft spot for Steve Rogers. That's how he got. She has into a the... soft spot for him, but she would still knock him down five or six pegs if she needed to. If she if she needed to, but it's a soft spot. It, if she had to, if he was going to compromise a mission. She would one thousand percent get rid of him. Okay, and get, but again, this time, Peggy have, Carter would not. She allowed herself to be compromised. She allowed Black Widow to be compromised. She allowed uh, Bucky Barnes as the Secretary of State to be compromised. She allowed the entire nation to be compromised because she was a lovesick puppy. Here's here's the thing. Even about even Peggy Captain Carter. America, even Captain America, would not have compromised that much for Bucky. So he went up against here's Iron Man. That I mean, goes, let, me just, let me just say this. Here's what kind of goes in line with how Ca- uh, Captain Carter is, okay? She was in the Guardians of the Multiverse, right? Because of uh-huh. she can make those big decisions and do the mission and everything else that needs to get done. She was also in the Illuminati for the exact same reason, even though we only got to see her for the five minutes and stuff, because she can make the hard decisions. They had to cut down Doctor Strange uh, from their universe because – he was a danger to the, that world and that universe and stuff. She is a person that puts the mission first. She's that actually is who she is. Even when she was introduced in season one of the what if and stuff, she wasn't this lovesick puppy who gets ruled. Can I by do something for a quick second? Else. Just a quick second. Hang on a sec guys. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't get it. I mean, it, so she did exactly what Captain America has done, and and this is why it. it's he he did it. He went up against Iron Man after Bucky mm-hmm. killed his, Iron Man's parents, killed somebody, and Correct. still protected yeah. him. That's our, That's Captain America. That's Steve Rogers. That's how who he who he is. So he has a soft spot, and then in the What If okay. series, and the What If series has painted Captain Carter to be the Captain. Even the opening scene of this episode opened up with the same Avengers New York scene, except they had Wasp in there instead of uh, everybody else. And but it was the same scene. The whole shield jump, throw him. It was the same scene. What If is painting her to be the substitute for Captain America? So by that definition, she's the Captain America in the What If series, and by that definition. She has Except a sauce. Better. That's, uh-uh. Except better. How is she better? She's not the substitute for Captain. She's Captain Carter in her universe and stuff. Exactly. There is no substitute. But, but she's the a one completely is- different person. She's not a clone or a lesser version of Captain America. She's but smarter. Just- she, she's smarter. She's more strategic. Okay. Let's talk about this for a second. Uh, her martial arts and combat skills are 1,000% better than captain america's could ever be did yeah, you see facts. the way she was fighting in this episode holy hell she was incredible the way she was fighting him when she that scene i was like she is like black hulk, widow hulk. mixed with like the hulk mm-hmm. mixed with uh captain so america mixed with iron man like all of their martial arts styles in one person mm-hmm. like that scene when they were fighting and she wrapped her legs around his head and like amazing Amazing. So, but that's—I mean, also too—you have a lot more less walls in animation than you do in live action. So we can't compare that because, I mean, in animation, that scene where they go flying through the fence and sliding under—that's not happening in the real movies. I mean, we can't judge the animation to real life movies. I mean, come you on just now. did though. You're like it's a shot for shot, like how they did in the movies. She's a clone of Captain America. You—you you were just actually how, using how they how, how they are. 
how they are written, not how they're physically moving. So how they frame they the episodes, how they framed the scenes. I understand that, okay. Lewis, but like, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Just seeing, her, like, wh why not? We've seen Black Widow fight. We've seen yeah. Black Widow fight live action, right? Yep. And mm -hmm. we've seen her fight in animation. So we have to And in an animation. Stuff. We've never seen C Captain Carter besides standing stiff on Doctor but, Strange. That's okay, it. But we saw, but Cap, we've seen Cap fight. You saw Cap fight in the Hydra Stomp pursuit. He looked like a little punk today. His fighting style is not there. He has no fighting style. I don't even like the way Cap fights in the MCU. He's kind of I mean, lame. I mean, have we seen <laughs> Cap at the end of Age of Ultron? I mean, the dude was sitting there doing all types of crazy moves. I he mean, does. He does. Fair. But I still think, I, I, I still think the Black Widow is a better day, fighter than he is. Yeah, hundred percent. Black Widow is a better fighter than he is. Uh, Black, and I think I mean, that that Black Widow today in this episode that um, Captain Carter was a much better fighter than Black Widow. Here's the thing: he uh, Black Widow is not as good of a fighter as Captain Carter. Captain Carter actually would have gave T'Challa the business and stuff. Black Panther, Black Panther would beat the brakes off of of uh, Steve Rogers. And he's had several several times and stuff. He could not have done that to to uh, to Captain Carter and stuff. I mean, there I, we can go. I can go over both comic and MCU as much information as we have because we have very little on Captain Carter. Why she is better, smarter, and more logical. I think about that's the issue for David role. is that she has this ability, but she didn't get that ability by being a lovesick puppy. She got her abilities by being strategic she got her abilities by how she trained harder than anybody in anything it's so like her her martial arts style isn't because she has the super soldier serum her martial arts style is because she's freaking peggy carter and she was a marine op or operative first like she she was trained in martial arts so she has different advantages that Steve Rogers doesn't have. If you were to take Peggy Carter and Steve Rogers, both of them with no super soldier serum, we already know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're be so that's the that. thing. She's yeah. already can't. She's already way more qualified than he is. Yep, and and she also showed that she's super. She's super uh, like soft spot for him, even at her prime. Uh, once again, we go back to this, this, this episode. And in the MCU, in the MCU, she, MCU, she, she may have a soft spot, but she would she cared would put a for she cared for a, a a a kid who was like who was doing good and who had a heart of gold, who was a scrawny little twerp and stuff. Exactly, I mean, a soft spot for her. But but, but if she but had to put a bullet in his head, she if did. she had to put a bullet in his head to defend a mission, she would have done it. But again, but but then again, though, but it, he's a soft spot for him, for a scrawny kid that has no business rhyme or reason to be in a super serum program. But yet he's in there. I mean, it's a soft spot. What if what if we what he's what in if, there if, because it didn't take someone with physical capabilities or intelligence to receive the super soldier serum. She knew it women. took someone with heart and integrity and someone who had duty towards country. And that's why when they threw that live grenade and he is the only one that went for it and all these other Marines look like a bunch of, or army guys look like a bunch of bitches. Um, that's, that is why he, that's why he is. It's not, it had nothing to do with his physical ability. It had nothing to do with his intelligence. It had to do with his heart and who he is inside. Correct. And who she is inside, what we got from her introduction into the what if series, which this is a continuation. It's not a different timeline. If this was a different timeline and the watcher hadn't have come in and introduced it as a completely, like he said, this is a sequel. We are going back to the same Peggy Carter from episode one. This isn't the same Peggy Carter from episode well, one. We don't, but she, we, this we had no, we go back to our first argument. We had no Steve Rogers in this. So we don't know how she would have reacted. She could, she could, she was still the same person, but Steve Rogers was in this one. So that's, that was the Achilles heel for her. Was he's in here? Okay, so what we're even, saying is okay. we don't. So That's what David like is saying is he doesn't. One. What he's saying. Okay, is let, he let's, did not I'll like give you that. that. Okay, I'll video. give you. She has a real soft spot where she's not so quick to. I'll let's just go with what you're saying. The premise of she's not so quick to um, 
just off him right off the back, right? She it doesn't that doesn't negate her intelligence or anything. Um, when they actually when Natasha and her they took Steve Rogers the knockout version to the, some secret hideout and stuff um, doesn't a, allude to the fact that Natasha was being logical and saying, "Hey, we need to get Banner or Stark in on this and try to figure out how we can, you know, bring Steve, you know, back and stuff." Versus her of uh, just like, you know, let's turn them turn them off and turn them back on again. It doesn't that doesn't has nothing to do because she loves him that 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 illogical kind of there's some poor writing stuff that was happening. Um, there's plenty of women who love their guy, but also understand red flags exist, right? You don't just walk into Nuketown where uh, all of a sudden you're being attacked and stuff and you don't raise any suspicion. Like, you know, like, hey, why didn't you tell me these bots like like to shoot and kill us and stuff like that or any of that stuff? And then Not going to lie, kind of when I got that, if I would have been taken to that town and those robots were just creepily standing there doing all those creepy robot things, I'd have been like, this guy is hella sus for bringing me here. Yep. I do not didn't trust warn him. Me, didn't do I anything, would not be but... sitting there trying to kiss him. And even when he loaded loaded the gun at her at the end, when the reveal of the the Hydra leader and stuff, and it's like mission accomplished and stuff, she wasn't really, you know, like logically wasn't putting stuff together until like she revealed that he was actually working for her. She was the mission the entire time. It was never Bucky Barnes and stuff like those logical points, I don't care how soft hard of a spot you were, you have for somebody and stuff. It doesn't override your ability to detect red flags or danger or any of that stuff. And that's what they portrayed this episode in. And regardless, she have a heart. She loves the man. She would love to have him back and stuff, but that doesn't negate all those other facts and stuff that either it's poor writing or they just made her this stupid I'm um, gaga I'm gonna just throw logic out the window kind of person. No, I think I think they kept the human nature in it. I mean, how much? Mm-hmm. How, uh, let's let's let's. How many of us live in domestic relationships where we don't want to acknowledge it until it's damn too late? I'm not saying that that doesn't happen and stuff. But I'm it just saying, like, we'll sit in relationships but... that we don't like and wait until it's 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 right in front of our face, and even then, sometimes miss it. If anything, they okay. wrote. They wrote this to be more relatable, and she's not she's not a robot. If that if okay, if this is natural, okay, if she's the hardcore. That's person- not common. Okay, you're you're arguing from a point that that there's a lot of us who are who've been in relationships where we saw red flags where we ended the relationship. So the, the say that I mean anyone can say who who how many of us been in an abusive relationship? Some people would raise their hands and stuff. Some would like, yeah, no, I I, I don't. I you know I, I got you. red flags and I was out of there. So that's but, not a real defense of of this and stuff. We don't know which one of that person we have. And so stuff. okay, so who would you who would you when you okay? Let's go off this then. Uh, all these characters that we're seeing in the what if. So obviously you're mm-hmm. saying that Captain Carter is up there. It's the mission. It's the mission. It's nothing but the mission. Okay. So if that's the case, we're going to go back to my one of my misleading moments. Wh- why didn't Winter Soldier take the shot? You're telling me that uh, Howard Stark was able to interrupt Bucky of a mission who is brainwashed on the mission? You're telling me, hey, I hacked their feed. Don't do it. You're telling me that he can do that based on that when Bucky is under a mind wash. Like, hey, these are our chance. That's your mission. No one interrupt the mission. And they, oh, this is Howard Stark. I interrupt their feed, so you don't need to do this now. He was already on the mission. It was already logged. Mm-hmm. So then exa- exactly my point. I mean, all these these what-if moments of them. Wait, what's your point? Because she's not brain- she wasn't brainwashed like Bucky. So what, but what, if, it's, what if, it's, if it's for the mission, though, if it's for the mission, then she should I, I didn't say that. What we're, what we're saying really is she's, she's a supposed very smart, intelligent person. What we're saying is she's supposed to be for the mission. And this Correct. episode, she was not for the mission. Mm-hmm. She was Yep. And guess a what else? And, puppy. Okay. Then let's go to the 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 Santa one, the Hollywood one. The Avengers Towers being taken over, and all these mm-hmm. superheroes that are searching for the power of good are ignoring Happy Hogan. They all like, we're too busy for you. We're too busy for you, even though HQ is being attacked. 
You well, it's because they, they don't they know, know HQ, HQ is being, being attached. attached. They they're busy. It's holiday season. How many yeah, times they're, they're does somebody doing try their to call thing. you during they understand the holiday that half season? He's planning a party. They don't really have time to talk. He didn't do his so part of like, the they, they, they probably they probably thought planning, Happy then. needed help with the party, and they're like, "I ain't got time for this." I'm I'm like literally Tony's sitting there playing Santa like a mall Santa with kids trying to sit on his lap. You've got. Clint and who, I don't remember who else it was, like fighting over a toy at a store. Banner, my wife's going to yeah. be, my it was Banner. My wife's going to be pissed if I don't bring this home. Like they put them in real life situations because when they're not being the Avengers, they do have lives. Oh, real life situations. That's crazy. That's what I was just talking about. Is he loves Steve Rogers. Okay. Like, that's, so that's, she can love Steve Rogers. I don't discount that. I, that's never been. That's why she was we love that, that she, she loves love Steve Rogers. She doesn't have to be a punk because she loves Steve Rogers. No one says she's a punk. She felt. I for am. It. I'm saying she's a punk. One hundred percent, she is. How, how is it? Because because they wrote a, a, a and I'm, I'm going to wait I'm a gonna second. Say wait. Because wait. they wrote a female that fell in love, and that's not today's no. like. Okay. That, then what's no. the point? Because she fell Lewis, in love. Wait. How is Lewis even? Lewis, why are you fighting us so hard on this when you hate love? It's not that I hate love like that, but it was great storytelling. She slipped it up. It was like not. it was that was awesome. It wasn't the most happy ending that we were all expecting. Like Louis, they caught me, a can I make you great make you storytelling? So that's logical for them to be in the secret base hideout and stuff and say, Yeah, let's let's just uh, turn them off and turn them on again and stuff. And that, that should fix up. Instead and when of he comes back, we're gonna help. just believe everything that he says. That's great writing from highly uh, deadly assassins and, and military strategists, uh, both of these people. In fact, and, and to defend Natasha, she was not all about trying to, let's just reboot them, turn them off and turn them on again. She literally was trying to, let's bring uh, Bruce Banner and Tony Stark in to help us with Steve Rogers and stuff, why we have them tucked away. But that's not what Peggy was doing and stuff. So yeah, that's not great story story writing. This episode was crap it, it just was not good story writing okay lewis can i can i tell you what i thought though sure I'm, I'm all down there was no i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a little bit of redemption so i agree with what david was saying to an extent it it was disheartening after um after seeing and like she she kind of did lose her integrity as a character. She lost her integrity as a as a like powerhouse leader of a woman, and it is frustrating seeing them make her be just another woman led by emotion, because that's such a trope. But I still I I I am that girl. I'm that girl who's led by emotion, and I am that girl who would do lovesick things. But I'm also not Peggy Carter. So like I, I would have I saw myself in her in this episode. And I told David before you came on, I said, honestly, they could have made this a feature length film and I would enjoy it. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. I, it was a really good episode. I mean, I, it 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 caused us to be like, damn, I mean, and change it. I mean, I don't get how her being loved for like that was a bad thing. I mean, it was her they, they made her look it, yeah. because that has been the Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter story the entire Marvel comics. I mean, the movies, everything. It's been that love circle. It's been the Spider-Man and Mary Jane storyline. I mean, I mean I will say I that's was traditional she, that's superhero one on one. No one said she said we in love. I was hoping for a, I was hoping for a Lou moment in this episode. I was hoping for a Lou moment. Remember when I we texted you guys? Well, no, no, we're getting no, I wanted a bigger one. You want to know what I wanted? What? When I texted you guys and I said, is this episode going to break me or is this episode going to wreck me? I wanted to see her shoot him in the face. Yeah, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for Steve Rogers to kill Bucky Barnes. There was a few of them in this one. Oh, and then another one that I, that I, here's what irritated me the damn most about this episode is I thought we got a Lou moment when he went up to destroy the Red Room. And I was like, he's gone. That's it. Like he sacrificed himself for love. I love that. And then they come back with, no, he's out there. I've got to go find him. I was like, man, for lack of a better word, fuck this shit. Like, no, if he is, mm -hmm. if he's going to go make that ultimate sacrifice for love, let him die. But mm, never mind. I'm beating a dead horse with it. I mean, it's exactly what Steve Rogers did with Bucky Barnes in all Avengers films. 
It's not the same person. So, but I wanted I him to die. But they are they are making it that way. She took the serum. Even the opening, the, the, the first episode. But she, here's the, the thing: they are writing he her to be never, Steve Rogers. Okay, but he is never going to exist outside of that Hydra Stomper suit. Mm-hmm. He cannot live outside of that Hydra Stomper suit, which yep. also doesn't make sense. To be completely honest, no, it doesn't that was, make sense. That's, oh, that's a whole writing. other bad. That is a whole, a whole other bad. Technology kept him young this whole time. No, that, sir, oh, no that, that is. Story-wise, I mean, supporting stories of this whole show were bad. The Children of Robots made no sense. <laughs> I mean, where does that? There's there's plot holes in this that I don't like, but it was like mm-hmm. supportive things that kind of just kept things being viewed. The robot okay, town but- was dumb. The floating red room was. I mean, that looked dumb. I mean, there was other things that I did not like, but the root of the story, I really. It was a question it. you would have asked. Yes. Um, so for me, the fact that he was not gone, gone at the end, because what the hell, like he's in, he's in that suit. He Mm self-sacrifices for what it appears is love, right? He's Mm -hmm. returning love to Peggy Carter in the only way he can, because he knows he can't live a life outside of this damn suit. He knows he's constantly going to be able to be reprogrammed. This is who he is now. He is. He is a mechanism. He is no longer human. So he is sacrificing himself for her. So for him to go up and fly up and destroy the Red Room, I thought it, that was a beautiful act of love. And then for him to not actually be gone, I was like, "Well, I, so I think the reason, he did all of that. He did all of that for what? For what?" I think the reason why that he's not gone is because out of all the episodes of What If We're Getting, this is our second one that has been a sequel. And I think there's like a few stories in this that are still staying parallel for season after season. I think there are some episodes of the Christmas one or okay, even that's like fine, the, but he needs to die. But I'm, I, I get that. But I think there's some episodes in these seasons that are causing cliffhangers. So when season three comes out that they're going to re go back to the story. I think some episodes are meant to be continuations through seasons. And some episodes are just to be like, what one-offs. if the Christmas episode? They're one off. Let me follow up to that. That shouldn't have okay, never came out. But here's my thing. I don't want any more Hydra Stomper Steve Rogers. I don't want any I don't, more of that. I don't either. I agree with what we said the first episodes. I like the stardom end them. Stardom end them. I like those because that plays in the what if. I mean, overall, right now, this season is is starting to taper off to a not good score. But I mean, i I'm gonna say it again, I'll say it all the time. This is Marvel's track record. They start off strong, they get real weak in the middle, and then they give us a rushed good season finale. This is the weakest they've been, and yeah, uh, the writing was bad. The story, the plot, it just, uh, you're not going to convince me a, 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 a machine is what, what kept Steve not only alive, that's fine, that's one thing, but keeping them young, like, it's it's what's the, the fountain of the aging. And the technology yeah. and stuff, oh. like, he... And, and with, what's the with, machine with held together? The, they're like, what's the machine held together together with? Like pomade being one of the yeah. joking ingredients. Like uh, it, it was old ass tech. Uh, oh, I, I will agree one hundred percent. I'm tired of the what if shows starting with things that are like, okay, so this was another one. They started off with the battle in New York, and then it just cuts, and then we never understand why that was even in there. So, I mean, I don't disagree with that at all. The supporting scenes of this show and the and the the writing of everything outside of the main three, and I think the main three, because each episode seems to have the main three characters. Now I'm using this reference from another YouTuber, but there is traditionally in all these what if shows, there's like the main three where it's those three storyline. There's a bunch of support. Samuel L. Jackson coming in for what? Absolutely, really nothing in this episode, just to be Samuel L. Jackson. So, and except for the obviously the ending, which the ending I felt really was really cool but him telling captain carter that we knew but we didn't know it's like so what are you here for steve uh sam because you're this is what you always do we don't want to tell you because we didn't want to tell you we want to wait for the right time but it seems like every time he has that mentality they sh- that time was the right time and now you held out too long so i think everything outside of captain carter black widow and steve's storyline was a bust in this episode I mean, everything was a bus. I, the, I, I mean, that, saying, but the red the room stuff, is. the red room stuff. I was really, I was hoping that they were going to go back to what we saw in Black Widow because I felt like the red room wasn't explored enough. I thought we were going to get more of that. 
when they showed up to the city of robots before I knew they were robots, and I saw Elizabeth Olsen's name, I was like, oh shit, they're touching on WandaVision. They're in a hex. That's where he just took her. No, they. It, I was waiting for Will Smith to come out of the movie. That would have been like, a fantastic story. I would have loved to see them go into a hex, especially with the, the especially with the ending that we got. I would have yeah. loved that. But again, just like we talked about yesterday, we can sit here and come up with a billion ideas, but the guys getting paid good money to do this are not doing that. All right, let me do a quick run through because we are 44 minutes in and we have not done that. So basically starts uh, Captain Carter is leading leading the fight in New York. They uh, it, it's the same scenes as Lewis said that we've seen Cap do. Then we see Natasha mm-hmm. and um, Captain Carter end up being they end up fighting this like they do they fight the Hydra Stomper right first before it goes to take mm-hmm. out. And then yeah, on the ship. they're, they're fighting it on the movie. ship that they're flying through. And all of a sudden, like the face mask comes up and it's Steve Rogers. And they're like, oh, my gosh, Steve, whatever. And Natasha's mm-hmm. telling her the entire time, that's not Steve. It's not Steve. It can't be Steve. Steve's gone. Steve's dead. Uh, they go and they ask Nick Fury about it. And Nick Fury is giving them the whole run around like, well, we weren't sure, but kind of like Steve did die. That Steve did do this. Steve died on his last mission against Hydra, blah, blah, blah. And um then we see that Bucky Barnes is Secretary of State, and he's coming. People are coming in to tell him that he is about to be under attack. Like the military is coming in, his guards are coming in to tell him that he's about to be under attack. And he's like, I'm Bucky Barnes. Like, I've gone through this before. I'm okay. And then you see the Hydra Stomper pull up in front of him in the glass windows and get ready to start shooting. So we see some battle soons where the Hydra Stomper is trying to take out Bucky Barnes. We see Bucky Barnes try and talk that down. We see Captain Carter try to stop Steve. It's not working. Then she ends up flying him up through the building, gets him out. They're fighting up in the atmosphere. And Natasha pulls a ship up for them to get into as he's falling through the atmosphere. Peggy Carter gets him onto the ship because he's a hunk of junk right now. They land somewhere that uh, even S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't know about. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And they are arguing over what, not arguing, but they're having a conversation over the best way to handle him because the suit is keeping him alive. And the suit is powered down right now. He's, it's not only keeping him alive, it is allowing him to not age. And Natasha wants to call Tony or she wants to call Bruce Banner and lovesick (laughs) Peggy is like, no, just, just turn him back on and turn him or turn him off and turn him back on. It'll, it'll work. Uh, Just like when your computer stops working. Right. And then all of a sudden. He wakes up and because they're talking about the red room and he wakes up and he's like, I can show you where it is. Hey, Peggy, I think I owe you a date. How about that mm-hmm. date? So he leads them to this very weird town that is very Pleasantville-esque, except for it's not real people. It's a bunch of robots and they're just kind of like, oh, OK. Natasha goes off to explore because... um Steve makes a comment to uh, Peggy that they finally have some time alone. And Natasha's like, yuck, I'm going to get some lemonade. I'm getting out of here. Oh, I missed something that was really funny. Um, When they're talking before they leave to go find the Red Room, they do have a Star Wars reference. And they're like, well, I thought he was maybe frozen in carbonite. And... (laughs) <laughs> Natasha looks at her, she's like really is is that what you do at night like you nerd uh, so I thought that was I thought that was a good nod and Steve and Peggy are talking and it seems like everything is kosher and they lean in for a kiss and she gets a widow what she calls a widow bite and all of a sudden these robots are all standing there and the little baby robot in the stroller starts shooting at her and they've got thousands of robots just shooting until all of a sudden the uh, red room Well, you see Steve power down and the red room comes into sight and it's up in the sky. And that is when 
we see Melina show up with her other Black Widows and Black Widow uh, and uh, Natasha's like, hey, I can see my bedroom from here. Melina's like, no, honey, we turned your uh, bedroom into a gym. Then we find out that this was all part of Melina's plan to get Peggy there because she's a genius and because she is like the most powerful woman on the planet. The most they powerful all human. To her. They the all Black looked Widows up to her. Friends. The Black Widows wanted to be like her and they are emotionless zombies. All looked up to her. And here's the thought. Here's the point that where I thought Lewis or, or that David was going to hate this. She goes, we all even saw your movie. And she looks at Natasha and she goes, there was a movie. And she goes, it was a musical. So I thought that was where they lost David because we know how David feels about Rogers the musical. Um, It's just another one. But again, that was that was funny to me. That was funny to me. And we keep seeing more battle scenes, more battle scenes. Everybody's fighting. And at the end, we see Natasha down on the ground because Melina told her sisters, the other widows, that they needed to go for her her knee, her left knee, because she had a uh, bike accident when she was in the third grade. Like the fact that the Black Widow can be taken, like that Natasha can be taken out by a bike injury that she had in third grade. Like that was weak to me. Um, Mm -hmm. So we still have Peggy fighting with Steve, who has been programmed by Melina to get her there. And they're fighting. And then... We see Steve kind of, it looks like he is listening to Captain she Carter. Makes one, impact, one last she, impassionate. She scene. makes, yeah, she makes one last impact and he looks up at the red room and she's like, no, Steve, I can't lose you again. And he looks at her and he flies up to go destroy the red room. And we see Natasha wrap a um like a lasso around his ankle and we see her tied up the other end to melina so melina goes up with him while he's destroying and assumingly she blows up because she is not in the hydra stomper suit and she gets natasha oh i had an issue with that too oh yeah she could just shot the freaking harpoon through her head (laughs) and just been done with it but yeah that would have been a great loom moment um we see Natasha and Peggy having a conversation at the end. She's stealing Tony's car. And she's like, does Tony know you're even using your car? And she's like, well, I thought I would just go out tonight without telling anybody. And you come to find out she is going to look for Steve because Steve is still out there. David, do you want to talk about the scene we saw after that? Yeah, and then she gets uh, Hex pulled into 1692 marvel which uh that came out series came out like 20 years ago um and we got to see uh medieval nick fury and the scarlet witch and it was the scarlet witch she had the crown and everything so and we all know that Um, that was was fantastic to see um and speaking of fantastic it would have been fantastic also to see the thing because the thing is also a part of the 1602 marvel uh, run and stuff and that would have been a great x-men that would have forced me not to lower my score below below a seven just for that little end credit of the of x-men but we got the scarlet witch and medieval nick fury um so we'll i'm assuming they're going to be another continuation of captain carter's story here so yep that's what happened yeah so uh my rating is still around a seven i would like i said i saw a lot of myself as a normal human woman with no superpowers and no training um in peggy carter in this episode but what about you david you still sitting at a three i'm at uh, i have four and that's it Uh, the four three yeah i'm at a four still the lowest rating i'm gonna give so yeah any changes for you no, I'm still at eight. All right. All right. There but you know what? It. I love this. I love that this episode had us all over the place because that, I mean, not every piece of Marvel, Marvel media or MCU media is going to be received by everyone the exact same way. We are not all going to love everything and we are not all going to hate everything the same. 
Um, there are lots of things that I love that Lewis hates. Lewis hates almost everything, to be completely honest. Just kidding, Lewis. <laughs> it's just our joke. It's just our joke to say Lewis hates everything. But uh, I'm glad that you love this episode so much, Lewis, because we don't typically get that from you. So, no, uh, Lou, no. do you want to talk about uh, the episode that is going to happen or take place a week after mm -hmm. What If is over? Yeah, so the idea I pitched was what we're going to do is take our lowest rating score, which I, in the back of my mind, I feel like the three or four is, is slightly uh, – fixed i'm not if i'm being honest but we're gonna take our lowest score episode and we are gonna rewrite it to how we would have seen it uh done so you take our our least favorite what if episode and rewriting it how we would have liked to see it so right now i am in a tie between ep the last episode and the christmas episode so yeah so we'll have an episode coming out roughly about a week or week or so after what if wraps what do you guys feel about doing that one live, possibly? I'm down. Yeah, I'm game. Live. I'm game for that. Live Marvel Tribe. And so we will just be rewriting our least favorite What If episode. But mm -hmm. we will be back tomorrow covering yes. season, or episode six of season two of What If. So keep tuning in. We love this. If you are loving what you are hearing, go ahead and join our Patreon, Waltz Apartment Podcast. You can access us on Discord if you're a Patreon you can follow us on any of our social medias at Walt's Apartment Podcast. We are literally everywhere, and we love to connect with fans. So go ahead and tell us what you're thinking about What If, what you're thinking about our Absolutely. Marvel Tribe recaps, what did you think about this episode, and maybe you'll hear some of your opinions or thoughts or some of your messages shared on the show. I think that is all we have for tonight, though. So we are going to go into our closing. Feel the pulse in your chest so you know you're alive. One team, one love. It's the Marvel Tribe. Have a good night, everyone. Peace out.